Let's hope John McClane's son is cooler than Indiana Jones is. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of A Good Day to Die Hard. You American? Yeah, New York. I hook up. Yeah. Welcome to Moscow. <laughs> Yes, the last time a major on-screen action hero introduced us to his son, it didn't go so well. But to be fair, that son was played by Shia LaBeouf at the time of his career when he was just beginning to become overexposed, and saying anything that came into his head during interviews, like how his mother was so hot he'd have sex with her if they weren't related. Crystal Skull also made it clear that Spielberg and Lucas were trying to pass the whip from Harrison Ford to LaBeouf, which also didn't play well with audiences. But luckily for the new Die Hard movie, this franchise always has McClane working with a partner rather than a love interest, so fitting a son into the mold isn't too off base. First it was Reginald Bell Johnson, next it was Art Evans and Sheila McCarthy, then famously Samuel L. Jackson, and in the last movie, Justin Long. Also, unlike with Indiana Jones, McClane's family has always been an important ingredient. The first two films featured Bonnie Bedelia as his wife, and in the fourth film his daughter was the one being held captive. She was played by fanboy favorite Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who cameos again here. But whatever happened to Bonnie Bedelia? I guess neither Bruce Willis nor the Hollywood suits want their star standing next to a 64-year-old and calling her his wife, reminding audiences he's 57 himself. But, uh, wasn't the return of Karen Allen one of the only things in Crystal Skull that did work? At least until she had to deliver the horrible lines they gave her. But instead, McClane will do some father-son bonding with Spartacus, Blood and Sands, Jai Courtney, and hopefully we won't have to endure too many look-how-old-John-McClane-is jokes. Because, you know, that would be ironic considering they got rid of Bedelia. But while the fifth film honors the franchise's traditions, it will mark the first time that McClane's adventures take place outside of the country. Speaking of tradition, though, all the subsequent Die Hard films have yet to offer up a villain as iconic as Hans Gruber. Can Die Hard 5 return to form? It seems unlikely considering McClane's foe isn't even featured in the trailer. Finally, while many would argue that the best Die Hard films are directed by John McTiernan, he's been busy the last few years in court for lying to the FBI about a wiretapping investigation involving a private detective he'd hired. In fact, after seven years, he's lost and is going to jail for a full year. Don't lie to the FBI. So instead, John Moore is taking the helm, the director of the solid behind enemy lines, and the not-so-solid Max Payne. But does any of this really matter? This is the defining franchise of Willis's career, and he's going to ride it like a cowboy into the sunset, already announcing plans for Die Hard 6. So what's your favorite Die Hard movie? Uh, favorite Die Hard movie? Mm, well, I know it's kind of cliche, but it's the first one. I would have to say this one. Wow! Yes. I think all of them. Yeah? Is yeah. this one as good as the rest? This one is better than the rest of them, but oh. I think all of them were like really good. Two. Two! All right, why not this one? Why is this your favorite? Um, I like this film a lot. Uh, there was, uh, this was much more fun than, uh, than Die Hard uh, 4 or 3. I like the, uh, the third and this one, and then uh, the first one. Oh, the cool. Second, the, the second one kind of just... That's where it kind of lost me, but I think it all came back. It's the last Die Hard movie. It's the last on my list of like uh, favorite Die Hard movies. Really? Okay, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Tell me why. Mm, I just didn't. I didn't feel it had enough substance. So if you've never seen a Die Hard movie before, why did you come and see this one? I just felt like it. How was it? Exhilarating, and yet somehow awesome. There's more excitement. It's a bigger action. Bruce Willis just kicking butt the whole time instead of break soft it was just the whole movie was just like I'm gonna keep going oh. he like takes down that helicopter <laughs> and everything but he took a helicopter in the last that's movie that's right but not as good as in this one really oh yeah. that's cool Bruce Willis is still a great action hero you know I love seeing Bruce Willis um do his thing on the big screen but as for John McClane I thought I thought he was um just a little bit less like he was kind of phoning it in nobody really liked Indiana Jones's son Right? What do you think of John McClane's son? John McClane's son is worthy of his father. Oh, wow, that's high praise. I don't even care. I mean, if they want to add like a family of a Bruce Willis family going on an adventure, I guess that would be all right. What Watch did you it. think of the father-son dynamic? Um, I thought it was a good idea, but I just didn't think it was like implemented really well. Was it the script's problem, or you think they could have cast someone better than Jai Courtney? No, it was definitely more of a script problem. Okay. I thought Jai Cor Courtney was fine. He oh, was good. a great, you know, he was actually a pretty good uh, action hero. The movie's rated R. It's 
back to being rated R. Did they say the whole Yippie ki -yay line? They did. They did. Oh, good. They did at the end, so I loved it. <laughs> you know, this movie's not getting good reviews. Critics don't like action films. They don't like science fiction. They don't like martial arts. The the films that win Academy Awards are the only films that they like. I say they're making a big mistake not to see it because this is a hell of a good movie. Well, they want to make a Die Hard 6. Do you think they'll be able to fool you again? Oh, man. I think <laughs> if they made a Die Hard 6, I would still go to see right? it. But my <laughs> expectations would be even lower oh, now. What do you give it on a 1 to 10? I give it a hundred percent. I give it a ten out of ten. I would have to give this movie a six. Nine. I would say a good nine and a half. So despite the critics and the bad word of mouth we're starting to hear, the diehard fans showed up and they were happy. Overall giving the film an 8.9. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from AMC Empire 25 and I hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.